All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the MPI or the message passing interface. And specifically, we're going to introduce MPI.jl, which is Julia's uh, wrapper on uh, the message passing interface. So, what is MPI? Um, it is, first of all, it is a standard. Uh, it's not a particular implementation or a set of binaries. There are multiple implementations of the standard. So, in other words, uh, you know, a committee formed, wrote out a set of rules uh, for what the application programming interface should look like, and the implementation is uh, left up to others. And there are certain implementations that are that can take advantage of certain types of interconnect, um, like in certain supercomputing clusters, they have an interconnect called InfiniBand, and uh, there's one implementation in particular, like MVA pitch, that is uh, especially suited for uh, that type of interconnect. So it's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're trying to talk about here uh, to discuss the various advantages and disadvantages of the different implementations of MPI. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that the, the standard of the application programming interface is defined and there are interfaces in C and Fortran. Um, Python has a, a wrapper on the C or uh, there used to be a C++ uh, standard as well. That's been deprecated. Uh, so Python has MPI for Pi, which is a set of wrappers that kind of look like the C++ standard. Julia, um, for the most part, follows the C standard, and in the package that you install to use MPI in Julia is MPI.jl. Uh, MPI is the de facto standard parallel programming interface for distributed memory computing, right? So uh, most, H most, most HPC clusters uh, are distributed memory supercomputers. So in MPI, a, a parallel program is launched as separate processes. These are called tasks often. <clears throat> and so what we often have to do is require, or, or what we often have to do is partition our data across those tasks. So uh, if we, you think of like we had one big array, what we'd want to do is break that array up into uh, as many pieces as there are processors and distribute that data to be operated on in parallel by each processor at the same time. Using MPI, you have to explicitly move the data from task to task, and we'll, uh, we'll see what that looks like in future lectures. There are kind of two classes of message passing. One is uh, point to point. That involves only two tasks, so you're explicitly moving, you know, say from processor zero to processor one, or processor three to processor seven. Uh, and then there's collective communications, which involve a set of tasks. Uh, for it. So an example of this would be to take data that's on process one, processor one, and distribute it to all the other processors uh, on the computer or you know, in, the, in the network. So those are called collective messaging. And so the point-to-point -point and collective messaging will be the topic of independent lectures uh, in the future. So right now we're going to talk specifically about MPI.jl. This is Julia's interface to the MPI, uh, and if, again, it follows the C standard. You can, for the most part, communicate any type of Julia object, um, you know, arrays, structs, anything that uh, you know is part of the standard library. You should be able to communicate uh, via message passing. Um, you know, like other things we've talked about, you know, MPI.jl is not installed by default, so you have to go into the package manager, uh, either from the Julia REPL, you issue these commands, or enter the package manager and just say add MPI. This will install a set of binaries uh, and uh, all everything associated with that so that you can run MPI on your machine. It's often a good idea to then, after installing MPI, to one time run this command. So load the library, uh, using MPI and then install this MPI exe.jl. So when you, as we'll see in just a second, when you run an MPI command, you launch it with a command called MPI exe. This is true of, of all M, uh, MPI commands, uh, but there's a special version of that. It's a small wrapper, in fact, on um, the MPI exe that's, that's distributed with the binaries that MPI.jl installs. 
And what this small wrapper does is it makes it project aware. So in Julia, we often work on isolated projects uh, and often we launch Julia with the special flag dash dash project. And so this special binary or special wrapper on the binary uh, MPI EXC makes it aware of those projects. And we'll, we'll see that syntax when it comes up later. Um, by default, the MPI EXC.jl is installed in a location in the user's home directory, a hidden folder called Julia, and there's a binary folder in there. <clears throat> so you'd have to either issue, you have to either specify the entire absolute path, or you have to add this location to your system path. So the first thing that we need to understand about MPI is that we have communicators, which uh, are objects that identify a set of processes which communicate only within their set, right? So normally what we do is there's, there's one communicator that launches and you use that, then it, it keeps track of the number of processes of your job. In the lingo of MPI, these are often called ranks. So we'll use that variable name uh, when we talk about them. Uh, and, you know, it's almost always required to call this mpi.com world. And again, a rank is a unique process ID within a communicator. Um, it's assigned by the system when the process initializes and used to specify the source and destination of messages. And we'll see that later when we talk about point to point and collective communication. But for now, we're just gonna write our first MPI program. Uh, so we have to load the library using MPI. We'll always have to initialize it. This uh, sets up the communicator. Um, then we can access the communicator via this mpi.com world. We'll assign it to a variable com. And then com, uh, when, when we call, uh, we have additional functions that we can call to get the rank and the size of the system. So again, the rank, now this is going to be different on every processor. So the thing you have to remember in an MPI program is that this, what you see here is, is run simultaneously on multiple processors, right? So um, this exact code will be run and say on processor zero, rank will be equal to zero, but on processor one, rank will be equal to one. One thing to keep in mind, because we're using uh, MPI.jl just wraps a set of binaries that implement the, the MPI standard. Uh, and in that standard, the, the ranks, the lowest index of the ranks is always zero. So in Julia, you know, our arrays start with index one. But in, when we're dealing with MPI, the ranks will start with index zero. So the, the processor numbers will go zero, one, two, three, four. Size is the, is the size of all of the processors in the, in the network, okay? And uh, I think the, the easiest way to, to look at this is through example. So this program will run and it will print and we're gonna interpolate the rank and the size into this string. And so we can launch this. Again, I'm gonna specify the entire path to this MPI exe.jl. Uh, in this case, we'll specify the number of processors as two. And uh, we're gonna call Julia and then run the script hello.jl. This, this is what uh, this code here has been saved as. And so when we run this, you'll see that it does report back, you know, hello world. I am rank one of two, I am rank zero of two. And you'll notice that you can't control the order of printing. So these things are running uh, simultaneously on two processors. And just for whatever reason, one of them uh, on the rank one processor finishes just slightly before the rank zero processor and uh, prints to the screen. So we can look at, you know, if we change this to rank three and run it. There you see, and, and again, you see that we can't control the order of printing, uh, but each rank is represented. Uh, likewise, we could change it to four. And again, uh, in this case, uh, things happen to print in order, but that's just a coincidence. We can't control uh, the order of uh, things that print to the screen. So this is just a short introduction to MPI and MPI.jl and the communicators, they'll be additional lectures that talk about point-to-point -point and collective communications.